thank y'all for joining. I'm gonna turn my ring off and I'm gonna just get started and jump into this here so I don't have much of a lag when I upload to YouTube. How y'all doing today? Hey Joy, hey Trey. Thanks for being here. Y'all can hear me, I'm gathering my volume up loud enough. You can hear? Bless. Yes, I like that. So that means you can hear me. Good. Today we're talking about victim mindset. Thank you, Troy. Tor Is that Troy? Tori. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Today we're talking about um, victim mindset. And while I'm waiting on a couple of people to come in, I want to talk real quickly about this image behind me if you can see it and what it means what it means to me and i have some questions that was on my um some of my uh, videos that i want to answer i don't know if the people gonna be here but i'll refer them to this particular video to um answer those questions but yeah like i was saying this particular um backdrop i purchased in arizona Arizona, Sedona, Arizona, when I went out there to um, go for a heart chakra retreat. And it stood out to me because it is a reflection of me in my journey. And I, I, I wanted to share that with you all so you can see what I see, you know, because we all have our own thoughts, our own ideas of what, you know, art is. But for me, the outside version represents me seeing with my physical eye, looking at life as if there was two sides, you know, like there's God and then there's the devil. There is black and then there's white, you know, female, male, life and death, things of that such. So this, that was like me conscious of being, conscious of being more or less the physical you know, conscious of what I saw in the physical, you know. But the image in the middle represents the subconscious mind. Being tapped into the subconscious mind and seeing life as if all is God. And so when you begin to look at life and look at others as if all is God, you can actually close your two outside eyes and use your first eye now hmm. because now you're tapped in now it's like the union has begun the union with the subconscious and the superconscious so like you know how like in the biblical text it's always talked about the marriage you know the bridesmaid and marriage um parables so there's a marriage that takes place in the journey because the biblical text is really all about us that take place in the journey of the subconscious and the superconscious where you can see God in all things. When you understand that, oh, okay, yeah, I used to see that there was a law of polarity that was running the show with the two sides, but all was God because there was truly only one God, one faith, one baptism. And so that separation was just an illusion of separation. <laughs> and so that's what this particular image means for me and so it has allowed me to go within and to get to know thyself and in knowing thyself knowing that all is God and that I am not separate from God and God is within me within so I wanted to share that because I was uploading a video and somebody asked me a question about it and I didn't really understand the question because I couldn't you know, see what was behind me. I wasn't paying attention. I was like, what? And then I uploaded the video. I was like, oh, he was talking about the backdrop. But that also ties into the message that I'm going to be speaking about um, today about the victim mindset, because it could also represent two different mindsets. A mindset of the victim, you know, when you're looking at the physical reality could be like, um, look what they did to me look what she did to me look what anything outside of me did to me that can be a victim mindset 
But then there, there are other people in the physical reality that operate from a different mindset. And they're more or less saying, look at what this did for me. They're asking, what is the lesson here? Because they want to grow and they want to evolve. They're not blaming. They're not pointing a finger to their reflections because they further understand thought creates things. Hmm. As within, so without. They understand that there. So they're not pointing no fingers. Mm -mm. They understand that people show up the way that they believe or that they view them to show up in their physical reality. Because in their little kingdom, they understand that they are God creating. And so every one is them pushed out. They understand that if they're not playing the victim. So as a man think it, so is he. So as a victim, it's not that way, it, it, it's, it's other people. But when you evolve in your journey, you begin to realize that, oh, I'm my savior. Oh, I gotta save myself. I'm the one that's responsible for hurting me. I'm the one responsible for healing me. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing all of this here. Oh, see, it's, it's a difference. It's like being accountable for your energy. Oh, that was my love. I see. So, oh, wait, the Christ conscious one was me. In the allegory text, it was a book about me, written by me, about me, for me. Oh, I caused the anger in me to fuel up and become out of control. Oh, I caused my depression with my thinking and my negative thoughts all the time. Oh, I'm the one that was holding me back. And so when you realize you're the one that's been doing all this, you're the one that's been holding you back, then you realize that everybody outside of you in your reality is waiting on you. <laughs> waiting on you to change because once you change, you, you allow others in your universe to change and transform. Based upon your belief, your self-concept changing, your belief about them changing, it's like a domino effect to other people. So with that being said, then I'm, I'm going to come to the um, comments here. With that being said, I just wanted to touch bases on that to like you see the difference in the mindsets and the limited beliefs of people, which is, is not an issue of, it's not a negative or a so-called wrong. People are at dif different places in their journey. I'm just trying to show the overall totality of what it looks like. There are people, even myself, in my journey, I just stop sometimes. Because it, it can be a lot, you know, because you're evolving with each step, like mentally, each thought you're evolving. And it just seems like it's just so much, you know, so much coming at you at one time where it's like, you know, I, I want to maybe go out, <laughs> get out, get out of this empty room with my thoughts. I want to be around some other people. I want to maybe if I'm vegan, no, I, I want to eat something that ain't too healthy. No, nope, not today. You know, sometimes you feel like that in the journey and it's, and that's okay. Cause you never get it wrong. You're always winning and you're always learning. So the two questions that I wanted to cover before I get to the comments, if y'all have any, one was from someone named Coco Goddess. She asked a question saying, so how do, wait a minute. How do I look past him not spending time with me? and giving energy to someone else. This particular person asked this question on a TikTok video that I did um, when I was talking about the twin flames. And I said, the twin flame told me to tell you that it's you. It was your thoughts. In so many words, I was saying, fix your thoughts. And so she commented this here. And so to answer Miss Coco, I would say start with your self-concept which is going to be the foundation. You will hear me say this all the time because you got to make sure you're stable there before you want to attract anybody because you're going to only meet that which you are. And you, you want to meet you at your best. And so, and another reason why I would say start there is because Some people are so low with their self-concept that they really sometimes be wanting to attract people that are, that are maybe abusive, you know? 
and um, that are running from them, so to speak, and whatever the situation is. So starting with your self-concept by asking yourself why is really, really important because it'll it'll bring you down to maybe an issue that you didn't even know that you deeply buried inside of you because sometimes sometimes in our heart our hearts be like onions you know just different layers that we got to pull back just keep pulling back until we get to the core of the issue so asking yourself why based upon your question you said how do i look past you want to look past him not spending time with me and giving energy to someone else so I would say, why? Why you want to look past that to begin with? And it could be, well, maybe I, um, she likes the, the thrill of the chase. And then you go back and you ask yourself, but why? Why do I like the thrill of the chase? And maybe she would say, um, because it's fun. But why? Why is it fun running? You know, you don't get to hot and sweaty. What are you running for? I don't like cardio. Why? <laughs> and so, then she might stumble upon a point, and I'm not saying this is her case. I'm just showing an example of why you want to ask why. She might stumble upon, well, when I was younger, you know, I had to fight for my mom and dad's attention because there were so many of us, you know, and I had to run behind them just to be seen, and there you go. And so but just by asking yourself why, you could get to the core of why that self-concept wants you to figure out a way to look past somebody that ain't giving no energy to you, but yet you see them in the physical reality they're giving energy to somebody else. And so at that moment, now you know why your self-concept is like it is, and then you know exactly what to work on with like your affirmations and your self-talk. So why would be the first thing I would say to her? And then I would say if she still desires this person and he's not beating her in doing, and she don't, um, have any ill feelings outside of after she asks herself why i would say mentally all you have to do is the opposite of what you did to to create this someone else and to create him looking past you so when you think of him you think of him as if you have him already, you're going to quantum jump that you already are in a relationship. You're going to feel like you're already in a relationship with this person. Like, so when you marry, you don't, you don't be, you know, all in a person space all the time. <laughs> so you could imagine you at this moment, wherever you are sitting in your room, or whatever, you know, that you are in the state of being as if you're married with him already and he's at work or he's, you know, on his way home, whatever. You use your human imagination is what I'm saying. And to jump past that resistance that you've created because there's somebody else, so there has to be some resistance there in your mind, is that you got to mentally block the someone else. <laughs> now, some of y'all, I know, I know, but you're God in your physical reality and you can manipulate energy like this here. So whoever this someone else is, this is you doing whatever you want to do in your journey. I'm just teaching you how. So whoever this someone is, you, you create them by giving thought to them, by giving energy to them, because all of this is energy, frequency, and vibration. And you can manipulate energy through thought as if this person does not exist. And so now you don't jumped over the resistance of this issue because you didn't eliminate this person. You don't see them at all anymore i'm talking about the third person here you don't see them at all it's just you and the person that you are desiring spending time together having fun loving on one another and using self-concept to build you up and you always put you on the pedestal you're not sweating them because see you can't, can't come from this thirsty mindset of sweating nobody mm -mm. nobody can't be on the throne god this is your kingdom god you gotta be on a throne so he can't be on a throne oh he's so fine and Oh my God, he got the biggest D and all this here. No, none of that, not in your kingdom because you have to be lifted up so you can draw him to you. And in doing that, you have to be like, I am lovable. Insert his name, so-and-so loves me. He's madly in love with me. I am, this is how you do your affirmations. You have to do about you. You have to lift you up. This is about you. So that energy can draw him in. I am an attractor. I'm attracting so-and-so right now. 
I am a magnet. So and so is magnetically drawn to me. I'm unforgettable. So and so is thinking about me right now. I am beauty. I am beautiful. So and so thinks I am the nat the most natural, beautiful woman in the world. You, you get the concept? But it gotta start with you. You gotta lift you up first. It gotta be about you first. And you loving on you till so and so has no choice in your mind and in your human imagination to love upon you too. So that's the way you do that. And in the daytime, don't forget about this here. In the daytime, you can't contradict what you said, God. You can't contradict the affirmations that you listen to at night, God. Because if you walking around in the physical reality, all oh, this, this stuff ain't working. That lady, she sounded like she was saying something, but I don't know. Maybe it just don't work for me. Well, so shall it be. So you got to let this mind be in you and you got to be unwavering with your faith. You got to have that right now kind of faith that they talk about in the biblical text. And that's how you do that. And it has to come. It's law. It's law of attraction. It's law of assumption. It's faith. <laughs> the next question, and then I'm going to go to the comments after this one here, is from somebody named Sierra. She asked on that video that I did when I was talking about, um, I think I was playing Beyonce music and I said, um, you meet Mr. Broke when you broken, you meet Mr. Unavailable when you don't feel worthy and you meet Mr. Let me love you when you're lovable. So she says, um, so what if I do feel lovable, but I don't want the person who's giving that love. <laughs> yeah yeah that's interesting because you're only experiencing a reflection of who you are so I would ask her well, what part of yourself you don't like <laughs> and work on changing that part of you that you don't want to deal with because you're only meeting people in the range energetically of the frequency that you're vibrating on. So let's say like we had a clock here and it's like, it's 1145 to 12 o'clock. You're meeting all these people because all of these people between 1145 and 12 o'clock are kind of vibing like you, you know, the energy fluctuating a little, just a little bit, but they kind of vibing like you. It only be hit, hit or miss here and there where you'll meet somebody maybe like me that might be in from 12 to 12, 15 that come over in your little range to encourage you to evolve in a certain area of your life, to teach you maybe a lesson, <laughs> but everybody else really your little tribe for where you are energetically. So I would say what, what, what part of yourself that you don't want to embrace? Because we have a lot of people in the physical reality that, that are there. You know, you'll meet them in the physical reality where they want maybe a millionaire or whatever, you know, the, the um, gold digger kind of, not, I'm just using that word, not that anything is wrong with that kind of energy people that just want the bag or whatever. You'll meet them sometimes and energetically they don't fit the image, and you could see that in the physical appearance, in the way that they carry themselves, they maybe don't be so much um, high class material, whatever the name is for them. But yet they want the men that's over here, maybe in that in that bracket of twelve to twelve fifteen, but they're not vibing there just yet. So these people and you would need to kind of like fix that energy, fix that part of you that you really don't want to embrace. Change that part of you, work on that self-concept part of you because really you have to become the thing that you're wanting. You got to become it energetically and you could have it. Energetically, you have to become it first. So you're saying you already feel like you're lovable, but if you're lovable, you can love anybody. If you're lovable, if you are love, if you think about the totality of God, God say in a biblical text, I reign on the just as well as ye unjust. God don't have no respect the person in the biblical text. So if you're lovable, love is kind. <laughs> 
Love is patient. Why can't you love this particular person that already is there that wants to share love with you already? If you're lovable, it really don't even need to be a person. To be honest with you, you couldn't find love in nature and be lovable and just be happy just to go outside every day and just look at nature. Some people in a place in their journey where they don't even need a partner in the physical to experience love. Some people just experience love with their pet. If you're lovable. <laughs> But that's if you're lovable. If you're lovable, you can look at a flower and experience love. You can look at your friends and experience love. If you're lovable, you could experience love with that man that's trying to love you, but you don't want him. And I don't mean to be ugly with you, baby. I'm just trying to tell you something. Because sometimes, and I'm going to go a little physical with you on this one and not be so spiritual with it. Because sometimes in a physical reality, women, us women, we get to a place in our journey well, maybe it's because we started making a little bit more money. Maybe it's because we have an extra degree now. Maybe it's because we want some things now in the physical reality that this particular man some seemingly can give us at this particular moment. So we seemingly fall out of love. But that wasn't love, though. If you're lovable, that that's not love if you're lovable. So the real question then becomes, if love is energy... <laughs> and you could energetically give love to anybody and receive love. Why you got to put a face on your love? So, so do you really want love or do you want to be connected to something in the physical? Like money, like a status, you know, like muscles. I mean, if you're lovable. I, I would, I would, I would, I would say to you, look at, look at your love because unconditional love could just love anybody. They got people that love, they don't, that can't even have sex that I've talked to. The partner can't even have sex with them, but the, the other person is staying because that's love because it's unconditional. And when you get to the place where you could be lovable and love no matter what, then that real love shows up because now you're operating spiritually. Now you really are lovable and you're not just saying you're a doer of that love and it has to come. It has to be given back to you. And you have to meet people on that frequency where you're vibing at, where you really are lovable. And I want you to remember that. And I'm telling you that from, from love. I'm not going to sugarcoat nothing for you because I want you to have the best of that love. But love is... You can love anybody and men not gonna always be pretty no maybe they got a lot of women that are pretty but they not gonna always be pretty they're not gonna always they wasn't created for all their beauty and, and and you know some of them have their bellies or whatever some of them have their little ego and all this and that and the third but if you are lovable somebody in your little frequency from your 11 45 to 12 o'clock you can get any one of them. Just like with Twin Flames. People talk about this, this one. No, 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 no. They ain't really ain't no one. Mm -mm. Anybody could be your supposed to be twin. If you put your mind on being lovable and loving them. You, you could tell yourself, this is the one God created just for me. But that's if you want to do that now. Okay, so I'm about to go to these comments and see what's going on here. Hello, hello, hello. Love that art piece. Oh, thank you, babe. Oh, Rasta. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for sharing. I really appreciate that. Let's see. Yes, it can. Okay. Yeah, so watch what you say about your mate because if you say, for instance, he works on my nerves. Yeah, definitely. Definitely watch that because thoughts create things and you will begin to have a mate who always work on your nerves, your last nerve. And then that causes, even in a relationship, that causes separation, you know? Because now, now, now you got a headache. Now you can't even be up in the same room with that particular person because you, you're speaking that into existence, that they work on your nerves. When you, when you really could be like, you could use your just your mental, your your inner voice and be like, oh my gosh, he loves me so much. He loves me so much. He he just can't he can't live life without me. And and he, he wants to provide for me so much. And I love him back. And you know, you just do the self-talk to soothe yourself. He 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 just means everything for my well-being. 
He's so attentive. He's so kind. You could always think the positive. We always have a choice in our thoughts. He was so purposeful in my life. God sent him just for me. I understand his purpose here now. Yeah. Now that I sit back and, and look at all the things that we've been through. Now that I know that I've changed, I can cause a change in him. Yeah. Yeah. And you could even begin to heal people in your inner voice. You know, they sometimes, sometimes some people like, you know, like when I'm at work, when I'm at work and somebody complaining about something, sometimes I, um, I just be looking at them. And in my inner voice, I don't know what the people be saying sometimes, but I'll be fixing it in my mind, whatever they talk complaining about. And I'll be smiling and they'll be like, what? What you smiling at? I was like, nothing. I'm just listening to you. I'm just listening. But I'll be in my mind. I'll be saying, all is well. You're going to come out. I see you out already. You're healed. You're, you, you, you know, you're going to get this da 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 whatever it is. You're powerful. Oh, I see you in your greatness. That problem's solved already. Yeah. Yeah. I know you're going to succeed. There's greatness inside of you. I feel so proud of you. Yeah. And that's the things that I'm saying inside of my mind. I don't know what they're talking about, but if you're God in your kingdom, you should be doing this to other people. Yeah, because they're waiting on you. you. you really the savior to yourself. But when you save yourself, you, you cause a trickle effect to save others because now you see them through the eyes of God. And this is what Jesus was doing with the people in the biblical text. Seeing them whole already. People should be getting healed in your kingdom already. Your, your kingdom shouldn't be chaotic. Mm -mm. Not in your kingdom. Not when you know this information. Not when you listen to this here. You get what you put out. Looking past is to look within you first. Yeah. You definitely have to look within because it all starts with you. Within. And within is where God is. It, within is where God is, but in the beginning, it's almost, almost like just questioning. You got to question. And in church, they teach you, you know, these fear tactics of don't question God. No, no, no. But God never asks himself a question that he doesn't already know the answer to, though. That always stuck out to me in church. I remember that. You know, I used to be in church. I was roughly about 12 years old when I got quote unquote saved. And I remember that so well that God never asked himself a question. One of the apostles was preaching and he said that and that just stuck with me. God never asked himself a question that he don't already know the answer to. And so when I grew in my spiritual walk, I remember that and I'm like, okay, so if, if I'm God in human form, then I need to be asking myself questions. And that's when I started, where I was already, as a little girl, always inquisitive. So I would, I would always ask in my mind, I would say, why? Why am I here? But why? But why we got to go to church? But why? Why I can't question God? I mean, God, you don't want to talk to me? Why? I used to ask so many questions. And those questions brought me clarity because you, your subconscious mind, which is tapped into infinite intelligence, knows these answers and it'll come to you. It is so important to go in here because this is where everything is. Good evening. Hey, uh, Kilo. Thanks for joining. You don't want him. Uh-oh, I'm too behind in the comments. You don't want him because you're off your grid. Ah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You had to tell signs, but you wanted to play while. Well. Oh, okay. You had the telltale signs. Okay, that's what you think it is? <laughs> Could be. I mean, the question wasn't, you know, that detailed. That's all she gave to um, to share. So I was answering based upon the limited information that I have. Let's see. I totally believe. This is from Hilo. I totally believe in manifestation. I'm kind of worrying a little bit about not taking action on a dream career. Worried about what, though? Why wouldn't you take action and believe in yourself? Speak what you want and it shall come. Definitely. 
Do you have a mentoring program? <laughs> Hi, Nubian. I do cons I offer consultations, but um, no, I've been asked about um, mentoring program. I've been looking into it, but just my consultations for right now. But what are you worried about? Because here's the thing, fear and worry are kind of like low frequency. They're like the opposite of faith. And so in the biblical text, and I always go back to that because, I, you know, I came from religion and, and I believe that that, that that book has a lot of hidden gems, if you could understand, if you have ears to hear, you know. So, so here's the thing, fear and faith, fear and faith are opposites. And so the biblical text says, I have not given you the spirit of fear but of power and of love and a sound mind. Do you not realize that your DNA, your frequency, your energetic being is higher when you're operating from positive thinking, from faith, you know, from being, from all knowing and, and just confidence and being rest assured that everything is always working out for me. Just having that mindset operating in God mode increases your frequency, changes and alters your DNA. This is why we have things in our physical reality that kind of makes us more phys more fearful <laughs> to kind of keep us tame believing in the program. You know, like news and, and wars and rumors of war and all these things. If you stay focused on that, you can't increase your frequency to get any higher, to get in the God mode. But on the other side of fear and worry, be the greatest moments of your life, be it anything in the physical, be it anything spiritually, meditation, evolving in life. On the other side of that fear is the greatest times of your life. That's when you're evolving. That's, that's for me, for me, when I get or feel nervous about something, it makes me kind of want to do it even more. You know, not no dare, devil kind of things or whatever. I mean, like moves like with careers and, you know, um, speaking in front of hundreds where I'm sweating. <laughs> it make, it gives me like an adrenaline rush because I know once I get over that, woo, I get greater. I get more confidence. I know that my DNA is changing. I know my frequency is rising. I know I'm evolving. So, so what I would say for you in, in, in is maybe self-concept as far as believing in self, saying things like, everything's working out for me. I trust God, if that's what you, you reverence. I trust the universe, whatever it is that you reverence. I only win. I only learn. It's going to be perfect. I know it. And then seeing yourself in this particular career already in abundance, whatever it is you're looking for, maybe more money, maybe travel, whatever you wearing a, you know, professional suits or whatever it is that you want to do or accomplish, you've been able to buy the things that you desire, travel the world, or whatever it is, jump over there, jump. Here, here's you wanting it. Here is the worry here. And here is you having it. What I'm saying is forget wanting it, forget worrying it, mentally take your mind over there. You have it already. You already the whatever, whatever it is. You're the president of whatever right now. And you're sitting down looking at me. You're the president looking at me right now. I'm just saying president because I don't know the, the, the title of whatever company you're talking about with this career. You're the CEO and you just chill. You're a CEO that's just chilling wherever you're chilling right now watching me because there's more things that you want to manifest now you already have the job you already have the career you know you already have your accountant already your accountant is, is is messaging you right now because you gave us some tax papers to take care of you can smell you can smell the the smell of the new car that you just bought with your with your abundance that new the leather smell you can feel the cherry wood desk in your office with your hands you have to be in body by that particular moment that you are wanting 
Ain't no worry right there. If you could, if you close your mind and do stuff like that, you ain't worried. You happy. Because you got what it is. You have what it is. But remember to use your five senses, though. You have to touch something. Touch that paperwork. Log into your laptop. Look at your millions from your career move that you have. See it. Smell. Just like I was telling you, smell that car. That love in the car. Hear. Hear all of the customers in your, 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 maybe in your office. Hear your, your clients or whoever going to be outside. Hear them talking. You in your office. Do that. Go there. <laughs> and when that feel good, what you're doing is, is, is creating through thought. And you're telling the universe or tricking the subconscious mind into, t into thinking that he have it. Subconscious mind don't know you on your bed <laughs> and not in the office. If you do stuff like that, it ain't going to know you not in your, your Tesla or whatever it is you want. It's not going to know that you're not in, on your yacht. So go there and start practicing going there. Let, let that worry go. If you want to go there, go there mentally. And then it has to come here physically because everything starts in the spiritual realm first. If that's if you really believe, like you said in that comment, I totally believe in manifestation. That kind of worry part, get that about, get that up out of there. Let it go. Okay, then let me see. Um, no. Okay, I think I'm hearing two different kinds of methods of manifesting. Has me questioning. Oh, you listen to a lot of different people. Is that what it is? Hi, beautiful. Hi, Bob. Oh, hey, Bob. I remember you. Yeah, own it. You have to own it. You have to own that state. You have to quantum jump into that state of being as if you own it already. So you're saying that, um, Kilo, you're saying you're hearing two different kinds of methods. I would say to you, go with what resonates with you. You know, we have our own internal GPS. You know, you can follow all kinds of different people. You know, I, I share who I used to listen to um, Abraham Hicks, um, you know, with Law of Attraction. And um, and it was cool for, you know, when I was in that place or that state of being. But it comes, you know, to a point in your journey. And Miss Abraham Hicks, she's on uh, YouTube. You can check her out if you don't know about her already. But it comes in a point in the journey where I won't listen to Abraham. I won't need, read no more books and I've read all kinds of books. I read all kinds of spiritual um, references, biblical texts, all kinds of religions. I did all of that. I did all of it. But it comes to a moment in your journey where you got to sit back and you got to see what is going to be for me. You got to put your sig signature on your manifesting. You know, you got to make it feel good for you. Cause some people don't feel good sitting up there meditating. You know, there's some people that just don't want to meditate, like, you know, laying down or, or, you know, sitting down, you know, everybody have their different way. You find your way and what works best for me is the quantum jumping. That, because I'm, I, I love using my imagination already. So it's just so, it feels so easy. I could jump into any state of being. It, could, it feels so easy. I could be silly at the drop of a dime. I could be like a child at a drop of a dime. I could be sexy. I could be whatever it is that I want in my head as a drop of a dime. So that's easy for me. But for some people, maybe they like meditation. Maybe they just like quiet in the mind. But see, in quiet in the mind, and I was telling somebody this here too, you know, when I was really deeply into meditating, quiet in the mind is really cool. You go into, you know, you go into this darkness, so to speak, and you know, you, you're quieting all your thoughts. And I think about it in the begin, beginning of the biblical text, how they say there was darkness on the face of the deep. That nothingness, that, that, that just us, the energy of us being here at the so-called beginning of creation, the darkness, that was just us. I have to create another reality, like, right? But then it says in that text that God said, let there be. So in meditating, if you just sit in and being still and, and you ain't letting something be, because in the darkness, that's pure uh, zero point energy where all creation comes from. Why aren't we letting something be? So I don't, I don't, Mm, I don't sit there and just do hours of just no darkness, just, just no thought or whatever. I clear my mind, yes. 
But I like to let things be. I like to use my human imagination because that's a force right there. And so that's easy for me. That's fun for me. You know, people, some people even say meditation is so boring. But now we're using your human imagination. It's not because you could even do that when you're out and about in the car going to Walmart or, or when you're at home cooking. You know, you could use your human imagination just jumping in any state that you want to be. But you're still in your now and you're still enjoying and partaking in this thing called life at the same time. So that's why I like to do what was fun for me. And that's going to vary depending upon who you are. And how you view things in your life, in your reality. So, I get that myself. Talk about it. Yeah, you feel like, yeah, Trey, you feel like the meditation is boring. That's what you're saying you get yourself. Yeah. Because, I mean, it's, it's, just, it's just fun. Like, you know, the other day I was getting, going to this corporate building. And they had these three sets of elevators. And I do this all the time. But there was one elevator that I had never got on before. One. You know, I always get the two on the end for some reason. Because in my mind, I like to play with stuff like that. In my mind, I'd be like, I wonder which one come first. I'm like, no, I'm going to tell it which one I want to get on. So it was always the two on the side. And that, that day there, I thought about the fact that i never been on the one in the middle. I was like, mm, no, you come in today. So what I did, hey, Dion. So what I did is I stood in front of that elevator, the one that I had never been on before, you know, where the, where the doors meet. I stood right there. <laughs> I don't care if people think I'm crazy. <laughs> I stood right there and I imagined myself in there. I said, come and get me. Cause I had hit the button and I was waiting on which one was gonna come. I said, come and get me. I closed my eyes. I imagined myself going to the floor. I'm in it already. And I'm having fun laughing at the fact that I'm right here, that I knew that I was going to be in there and that it was going to be the one that come for me because I was creating. I like to do stuff like that. And when you do stuff like that on simple things, you be like, Ooh, I'm a fool with it, you know, and you get really excited about your powers and your manifestation. And when it came, I was like, mm -hmm, that's what I'm talking about. Open up these doors, open up these doors. And, you know, you just have fun with it. That's fun to me. And you, this, this, this journey is supposed to be about you having fun along the way. So don't forget to have fun. And it makes you happy. It increases your frequency. You know? It, it really does. So, okay. All right. Well, let me see what time it is. Because I don't want to go. I don't want to go over. I like to only do. Oh, okay. I, okay, I got like 15, 14 more minutes. If y'all have any more questions. If not. I can end it. I, I thank each and every one of you for joining me tonight. Hey, Jess. How you doing, babe? Thanks for joining. Hey, Mana's doll. I, I don't know if I'm saying that right. Munisa? Maybe Munisa doll. Thanks for joining. We were talking about victim mindset versus a God set mindset. Oh, it's Monica. Okay. Okay, hey Monica, how you doing, babe? You showed up at the right time for me. This is awesome, thank you. Hey, hey Mia, Monique, perfect. Well, you showed up with the thought and I just came forward because you had the thought already. So thank you for thinking me up into your reality. You create your own reality. So everything happens through thought. Everybody, a lot of people have been saying that to me. Oh, you showed up at the right time. Yeah. Well, you asked your question. You asked for me to come forth in your reality. Thanks for having me. That's how powerful you are. <laughs> That's how amazing you are. That's how cold you are with it. Look at things like that. How can I raise my frequency when things are so bad in my life? Stop saying that things are so bad in my life. That's the first step. Things, you know, like, okay, so let's say you have what you think is a bad day. Here we go. We're going to change that bad day right quick. Mm. I had a beautiful day. I really did. I feel so thankful for waking up today. I feel so thankful for life. I feel so thankful for knowing that I'm tapped in to all knowing, infinite intelligence. I feel so thankful for this newfound wisdom of my thoughts create things. 
And since I know now that my thoughts create things, I'm going to pay attention to my thoughts. Because it has created some seemingly bad things for me. And I know now that if I change them and do the opposite, and I conjure up this energy of constantly doing the opposite, that it could create good things for me. And I can see myself excelling in life. I can see myself happy. And, and I could always ask myself why. I could lie down in my bed and I can say, why am I sad? And it'll show me exactly why. And then I can do the opposite just to increase my frequency. And I can say to my subconscious mind that knows everything already. My subconscious mind knows what love and joy and bliss. Whew, what it feels like already. So I can say, universe, show me a beautiful day. Show me what it feels like to be happy. Show me what laughter feels like because I haven't experienced it in a long time. Just show it to me. Oh, this is a day that I need you, subconscious mind, AKA universe. Show me. I wanna feel love. Show me what love feels like. Oh, show me the good old days. Show me. Oh, I see it, I see it, I see it. And then a smile comes to your face because an image gonna show up. Smile come to your face and you grab that feeling and you hold on the momentum to that feeling. And you ride the wave of that feeling. And what happens is being that thought is feminine energy. You gonna have another thought and another thought and another thought like that thought because feminine energy creates more thoughts than the one that you just came up with. The one that the subconscious mind, you gonna go down the rabbit hole. You know, we are the DMT. You know how people try to get high off of drugs and stuff, the DMT, the dimethyltryptamine, we have that capability without no, without the drug. All we have to do is realize that we are God. All we have to do is go in here and create that. We have all kinds of superpowers in there. Nothing out here can make our day bad if we go in here and tell it no. Show me what good days feel like. I didn't ask you for bad shitty days. I asked you for good days. I asked you for happy. I asked you for money. I asked you for peace. Show me. You talk to it. You change that situation. You have the power. And you stop speaking the word of that bad. You stop speaking the word of that negative. And it has to go away. It's law. It has to go away. It's going to simmer down. So, let me see where I left off at. How can I raise my frequency? So, that's how you raise your frequency. Outside of that, you could go outside in the sun. You could do some jumping jacks. You could turn on some music and start dancing. You could start rapping in the mirror. You could go stand in the mirror, look at yourself and laugh at yourself. You could actually go look in the mirror, cry first, get all that out because you're just gonna be rinsing your heart off anyway. Then look at yourself, how ugly you look because we all look a little ugly when we're crying and you just laugh at yourself and be like, look at, look at, look at this face I just made here. You could hug yourself. You could tell yourself how proud you are of yourself. You could do the moonwalk when you're doing it. There's all kinds of ways to increase your frequency. But you got to be looking for those ways to increase instead of the ways to decrease. You got to be going in that direction. You got to want it. This, phys this spiritual journey, you got to want it. You got to ask for it. The universe unfolds when you are ready, when you ask for it. If not, then everybody will be healthy, conscious, in Christ conscious mode already. No, you got to ask for it. Show me. Thank you for sure not speak positivity over your life. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, thank you for the roses. I like roses, Dion. Don't you spoil me up in here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, you got it. Okay, good. And you do that. And so this is just an energetic thing. So it might go down just like you look at the sun. I mean, at the news, if you watch that kind of thing, because I don't. And so if they don't do this no more, I don't know <laughs> no better. But they used to put on the weather, they had like the seven day forecast or whatever, where you can see that the temperature, you know, 
ain't gonna be the same all seven days. So energy gonna fluctuate. It's gonna fluctuate, but you have the power to make it go higher. You always have that power. You are not the victim. You're God creating your reality. Believe it or not, giving your attention, the people that give their attention to the news actually creating the weather. The people that sit there and watch that when they say there's such and such a percentage of rain or whatever, and everybody go to prepare for the rain on that day is, is really what's making the rain come. It ain't no machine that they got up in the air. It's the energy of the people that's ready to pull out the umbrella because they done conjured up all of the energy of all of the people that's scared to get their head wet in the rain. So now the forecast be accurate on that particular day. So it's our energy always, it's your energy always that's creating everything outside of it. We don't, we, we get so limited thinking that we don't believe in ourselves no more. We don't believe in ourselves no more. But self is where everything is. Let's see. Oops. Okay. So, anyway. Oh, so I'm on time. I got about six more minutes left. But um, that's really what I wanted to talk about. Just a uh, victim mindset. And you have the power to change that mindset at any point. And yes, I do know that, you know, things happen, but you got to know this one thing, that this physical reality is not real, that you can trust in source energy, that you're on a journey just to get to know thyself. And when you start to look at that, even for children, because I am a mother in the physical reality, when you start to look at things and in this, this, this thought process where you see through the eyes of God, where you really understand that this is not real, I'm a mother, so you can also get, what I do is I give that trust of knowing that my children also have this internal GPS system. My children also have this connection with source energy. This, that little voice that say, no, don't do that go home that we'll call it you know our inner voice or or our higher self or whatever everybody have that everybody tap into that some people just hear it a little louder or clearer than others some people get a little bit more information you know since we all vibrate at different frequency than others but everybody has that connection to source and so even as a mother i trust they tapped in mm -hmm. And it, and it alleviates that worry. It alleviates that so-called bad day, knowing, hey, I'm tapped in. Can't get it wrong. Even if this physical avatar is no more, guess what? I live on. Because <laughs> I'm tapped in. I, I may come back in physical form, jump into another avatar, but I just become greater. Source energy becomes greater because I just give my experience to source energy and it expands. I can't get this thing called life wrong. This, 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 this not my forever. This not my forever body. I'm not this body. It's not my forever. This is my temporary. If you start to think outside of the box, you could really enjoy every aspect and you could look through the eyes of God and enjoy life. And even when something seemingly bad happened to you, you could say, what is, what is the lesson here? Oh, I needed to learn a little bit more patience. Oh, thank you for the heart. That's pretty cool. I needed to learn some patience here. Okay. I needed to be easy with my reflection here. I needed to learn how to love here. Oh yeah, because I thought I was lovable and I thought I was loving. But no, I, I, I wasn't really practicing that unconditional kind of love. That I could love you anyway. Mm -hmm. I thought I was there, but I'm not. I didn't quite get it just yet. If we start to do that and practice that in that mindset, in that state of being... Nothing really can shake you. And I said on the last video, you know, you got to be unequitable with your energy. Not, not, so, not, not in the way of being cold hearted, but, but in the way of saying, I'm not, I don't need to go down. I don't need to put myself in a situation where I'm going way down. I don't need to do that because I have faith. Because I know that all things are working out for me. That I know, and I know that I could always pull myself 
out of any situation mentally. I know I can walk away and I can go in a peaceful place. I can use my human imagination. I can use my questioning attitude and ask myself why. I can find love and joy and peace out of anything. Because I'm connected to everything. And life happens through me, not to me. That's the most important piece. To know that life is happening through you, not to you. You're not no victim. You, you wanted to come forth. You wanted to come forth to show your gift or present your gift to the world. That you're the savior. That you're a manifester. You wanted this. And so we come here in the physical reality and then we say that it's bad. No, play the game. Play the game that you asked to play. And have fun winning. Because that's all you're going to do. Let's see. Okay. Who them things jump? Good job, queen. Oh, thank you. Mama, love you. That's my mama, y'all. Tapped in and tuned into our own unique frequency and vibration. Definitely. Oh, I got lights. Look at the lights. Those are so cool. I like those lights. Y'all can tell I'm new to the to the TikTok. This is like my third live here. But that was cool. Anyway, I think I'm to, um, on time. Yep, it's 8.59. And I want to keep it on time from 8 to 9 o'clock. For the, um, to upload to my YouTube channel and for people to be here at that appointed time and know that I'm going to be here and be on time, get in and out. And I don't want to give too much at one time. Thanks for your questions. Thanks for the support on TikTok. I really appreciate you all. This video was from my heart to yours. Be blessed, baby.